So we'll move from history to the future. Our next speaker is Willie Thackey. Uh, Willie is the founder and organizer of the E-Flight Expo at Arrow and the CEO of Flying Pages. Uh, he owns several publishing companies, including Flying Pages, Flying Pages Europe, Flying Pages China, which is the only general aviation pilots magazine in Chinese in China. He founded Flügel Magazine, the German aviation magazine, in 1992. He's published the World Directory of Light Aviation since 1995 in uh, uh, English, French, German, and Chinese. Willie began his publishing career at the Swiss, Swiss publishing house uh, uh, Renier. Yeah, close enough. He has been working for aviation publications since 1983. He's also the organizer and founder of the E-Flight Expo, which happens at Aero Friedrichshafen every year since 2009. Um, and the organizer of the first uh, World E-Flight Air Show at Aero in 2017. Uh, since 2004, Willie has been an aviation consultant for government and private aviation companies in Europe, the US, and China. Uh, he uh, specializes in electric aviation, um, ultralight, light sport, and general aviation. He has a pilot and instructor's license for hang gliding, paraglider, and ultralight. Uh, he's had his private pilot's license since 1983. He has a degree from LMU Munich in political science and economics and speaks German, French, English, Spanish, and Italian, and he may have added another one. His uh, talk today is Autonomous VTOL, ready for liftoff around the world. An overview. Please welcome Willie. Thanks, and I think it's perfect match with uh, Todd speaking about the history, and now we're gonna go to the future. And the big difference, I really think it is electric, but it is also all the development in the computer side in uh, artificial intelligence coming up, because this is something which really going to change the world of aviation. And I will show you a little bit of my vision, how I think it's going to be changed. And, um, and not only, as electric is such an important component, I'm not only talking about EV toll, I'm also giving a, a quick overview on what is the last development in electric aviation. And I can tell you, I've, I've, I'm in aviation since uh, Yolanka mentioned, 1983. Uh, doing publications since then, and there has never been such a quick time where so many things are happening. Like Todd said, he had the slides uh, on last Monday. You will see at the end of my presentation, I have some, some of the slides even on Tuesday and Thursday. So uh, the things are happening really fast. This is a little bit Yolanka mentioned, so we don't have to leave this slide very on. It's also, but there is one image at the bottom which is giving an impression how electrification in aviation, especially in general aviation, changes uh, also the attention from the public. It's not only the big, uh, since Uber entered with Uber Elevate, it's already this, on the picture down there you have the EU commissioner. The EU commissioner never visited the gen largest general aviation show in Europe, the Aero, until electric came up. Then she came up for five hours, and four and a half hours, I guided her around with all the electric stuff we had. There. So you see where the focus is, that at some point, suddenly politicians get interest because they see there is a vision with electric av aviation. You can, at some point, suddenly, get aviation, general aviation, small aircraft from a toy for some few, what they think or what the general public think is, of very expensive way of transportation for very few people into something where a lot of people may be able to use. At least that's the vision. And that's the vision you will see also where not only the EU commissioner, also you know here in the United States, politicians suddenly have an ear for aviation with small aircraft. Oh, no, I think, uh, ah, that's my background. 
on electric aviation. I'm pilot since 1982, but I started uh, my elect first electric flight in 2009 in China with this little aircraft. It's uh, actually a based a flight star, American uh, ultralight, which was electrified. And this was so impressive, so amazing, that afterwards I came back to Aero Friedrichshafen and I told them, we have to integrate it into the show. We have to do something. For the first three, four years, and they were complaining every year and said, ah, what you're doing there, you know, that's not bringing business, it's only very few people, there. it's not going to the market. And it took a while until it's growing and growing. So last year, we had a full hall just of electric aircraft. We had an electric flight show. And I think this is the first appearance of the Volocopter, which is actually the first eVTOL flying with a certification of the Ultralight Association. I will talk more about this later. This is from this year's eFlight show, where we had the um, most interesting thing, which was a formation flight of, the, of two Siemens aircraft. And there is a, um, also they started a hybrid version with a smart diesel engine, uh, which is flying now. It didn't fly in the show there. They showed it at the show. They let it running because of aviation is still like it is. Bad weather before the show, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. They couldn't do the enough flight testing, so they didn't fly at the show. Interesting, so in the left uh, slide, you see uh, the, the developers of this uh, smart diesel combined with this uh, uh, Siemens drive. On the right side, you also see uh, that there is... Uh, the infrastructure is going to be developed. Like several companies showed um, infrastructure things like electric refueling station or um, other infrastructure which will be needed for electric aviation. This is another field where electric is used and it's used a lot. On the top you see the only certified electric aircraft, which is there up to now worldwide, really certified in an in a existing category, not light sport aircraft, because there is one in China which was uh, done recently, uh, which is in production and in sales. The Antares is a motor glider, and you also see why only the gliders are successful up to now. Because of the energy density, you need a very efficient airframe to get some flight hours out of it. And at the bottom, you see an ev evaluation of uh, development, of, which is based on this aircraft, which is the Antares with a distributed propulsion and a fuel cell drive, which is able to fly uh, up to 48 hours for surveillance. And they also are able to fly autonomously uh, remote controlled and with a pilot. Um, I do, ma uh, Yolanka mentioned, I do magazines and I was so fascinated by electric aviation I started putting electrical stories in the magazine, a lot of electrical stories, I liked them. I had one po problem at some point where the readers of my magazine and especially also the advertisers said, uh, you can't put any, we don't want to read all this, you know, we fly our normal end with combustion end, we can't buy this, we can't fly this. So you should talk about the, in, bracket, in parentheses, normal aviation, so don't talk too much about electric. But at the same time, there are so much news coming up in electric that I had so many storage which interested me and I saw there are a lot of people which are interested in it. And so last year I could finally persuade uh, Gamma to support this idea. And so we put out this eFlight journal which comes out on a regular basis. And as the eFlight community is really one of the communities which is around the globe. So putting out a printed magazine does not make so much sense First, it takes a long time to ship the magazines around. Second, it's very expensive. So we put it basically online, but for large events like here at Oshkosh, it's a show, we have uh, printed out copies and you probably grabbed some uh, on the way in. If not, I hope you will do. Or you just scan the code, then you have it on your cell phone or tablet. Um, latest thing in development we have done is 
uh, last year we started because, like I said before, it's a real global movement. So we had a, a um, e-flight forum in China, and you will see, if you look at the picture, you'll see several of the speakers you have here today, which have been also there in China. And so it's, it's really something where it's growing together. You also see, you will, we'll have later a talk of Carl Dietrich of Terrafugia, which his company was bought by uh, the Chinese uh, car manufacturer, Geely. So it is a, a global world which is developing this electric aircraft. There is not any more uh, which is in one country, and though perhaps your president is a little bit, little bit wrong there when he tries to do everything to, to do in the United States. I'm not sure, but uh, that's just my European point of view. There is one thing, we had the E-Flight Expo and the logo since the beginning, but over the last two years actually, since the Uber came out with the Elevate, the electric VTOL got so much accelerated and that we decided we have to redesign the logo. And we also, I can announce here, we have the, uh, the promise of one, perhaps three EV toll manufacturers which are going to fly next year at the E-Flight show at Aero. So you should mark it in your calendar. The dates will come later. Now I go over a little bit the development of where we are with the E-Flight, uh, with the EV tolls flying. So now we're at the subject. Sorry for talking nearly 10 minutes about going to the subject, but I really think this electric is one of the key factors which led to this uh, because like Todd mentioned before, why it's called the wheel of misfortune, because before the electric, it was very hard to make a VTOL aircraft except the helicopter, uh, me being a commercial valid avia aircraft, and even the helicopter is very expensive in cost of buying, cost of flying, cost of maintenance. So the first one was, is the vol volocopter, is flying in the, I will talk about this later, in the German ultralight class. Um, and with this, it doesn't have a final certification, it has a preliminary certification, but with this, they are allowed to fly single seat, double seat, and they also have been flying autonomously already in Dubai. So the first ones I will show you are all aircraft which in full size has been taken off. The Lilium took off last year about that time, no, about March last year. Um, the Ehang, this is a new version, which is a two-seater, which has now 16 props. The old one had eight props on four arms. This has 16 props on eight arms uh, from China. They are flying. It's a little bit unclear because I did met them recently in Cologne. And there was a question, yeah, with which certification are you flying? And their answer was, yeah, we come from China. So you talk there with some people, and that's how we get this arranged. So uh, I think, uh, and I also know from our Chinese magazine, there is no such way of certifying uh, VTOL aircraft except with special permissions. And they have the right connections to get the special connection, uh, connection, uh, conditions and special permissions. Joby, actually he was, uh, it was very interesting. I met uh, um, Joe Ben Brevet, who is founder of Joby, at the very first uh, G uh, Gamma EPIC meeting, which is uh, Gamma, the General Aviation Manufacturers Association, um, some five years ago started, or four years ago, started the EPIC committee, which is a committee for electric propulsion and innovation. and. At this point, most of the people were talking about having electric aircraft installed in, in normal aircraft, how we can do the certification, what are the problems with the batteries, and how uh, high voltage in cockpits can be certified. And he was all the time talking, no, no, we have to talk about an autonomous. It was even like some people were annoyed for it. But now, as you see, where there is a real push in uh, electric aviation, where there has been a lot of investment over the last two years, he was in a way right, because this way of flying, I'm persuaded, which is proposed by Uber and others, will only happen 
when the vehicles are able to fly. If there, there may be a pilot on board for a certain time, but the vehicles will be able to fly autonomously. Um, the Vahana concept, also still, we are still in the section of EV tolls, which have been flying. The Vahana made its first uh, flight beginning of this year, and they want to do the first transition flight, I think, during the next month. So would, we would see a transition flight coming very soon. The E-Flyer, uh, I will talk a little bit more later. Um, the E-Flyer uh, is also flying. It's also, they announce, officially on sale. It's a Part 103 ultralight here in the United States. So theoretically, you don't need a license, you don't need a certification, you can buy it, you can fly it. But you will hear a little bit later that the concept is not that easy. Uh, the Kitty Hawk uh, Cora, also uh, EV tall, but this time not on the Part 103, but on the in the direction of air transport of uh, persons to be an autonomous aircraft. We will hear more from Kitty Hawk probably later as Tom Gunnarsson is speaking here. Um, this is uh, Airbus. They don't only have this subsidiary A3 in the Silicon Valley here, which is flying with a single-seated Vahana. They also have two concepts which are right now uh, run under the helicopter division of Airbus, and which is the uh, uh, city Airbus and the uh, design from Il Design, the pop-up, where you combine a vehicle with some uh, uh, um, rotors. And actually, this is what, you what Ted Todd mentioned before. Uh, in this project, uh, in the Ital Design project, because Ital Design is a daughter company, a uh, sub subsidiary of uh, Volkswagen, and they are working together with Audi. So this is one of the audit concepts, but you're totally right. Also other companies, we had contact recently with Porsche, with uh, several other car companies. Uh, there has been Toyota investing into um, Joby and uh, other camp car companies like Geely buying Terrafugia. So car industry is very heavily looking at this. Um, not only the car industry, we saw Airbus, Aurora has been bought by Boeing. So also uh, the other big giant is looking at there. Um, this was the very first uh, scaled prototype they have been flying. And these were some designs they showed this year at the Uber event. Um, there comes the Terrafugia and we will hear more about the Terrafugia later from Carl. So I don't have to mention this. People were very curious when it was announced last year at the Uber event that Pipistrelle, the manufacturer of ultralight, light sport, and now also certified aircraft, uh, was announcing being one of the partners of Uber and developing a VTOL aircraft. And they kept silence very closely, so you didn't get any image about what they're working on. This was the first image released this year at Uber. And I'm still not sure if it really would look like this. At least they gave something to the uh, public that it could look like this. But they're working hard on it. And on, in latest end 2019, 2020, they have to release something because that's the time when Uber wants to seize the vehicles to make their selections. So they will come. Sam. They, they are really working on prototypes. There and now we had Airbus, Boeing, Embraer is also a partner of uh, Uber, and this was the air taxi concept they released this year. There is another company came in which uh, this year with uh, the Uber concept, which is the Karem company, which worked a lot on tilt rotors in the area and in the time when they were not electrical driven, but they kept the concept now also for their electrical aircraft. Another one where I still don't have any image of how their vehicle could look is Bell, because the only thing they showed is this virtu uh, virtual ride you could see, you, so you could see how in future perhaps you would fly, but uh, it's not the vehicle, it's just the, the cabin, what they show there, it's more uh, a helicopter-like cabin, it's more the 3D, what they want to show, how it could be looking inside, from inside the aircraft. There we have the one of the concepts, Uber released two 
um, concepts, uh, three concepts this year, also how they think the aircraft could look, but we'll hear more from Uber later. Let's go to the legal situation. So what is it? Because we are all um, aware that when this aircraft should get into the air, they must have some kind of certification. So we hear a lot and see in the papers and hear announcement of competitors, yeah, they want to fly with a four-seat vertical takeoff in end of 2019, and they want to start service in 2020. I'm not sure if this will work with the certifications. So if you look at the situation right now, EASA is going to certify the first two-seat conventional aircraft they are hoping by the end of this year. EASA works with at least two, but I know even more. Uh, the two are uh, Volocopter and Lilium, but they work with more eVTOL manufacturers on certification. Most of it uh, will look into the Part 23 category, not Part 27 helicopters. Um, China has certified an electric LSA, which is a two-seater, meant to be a training aircraft, but not in service yet. Uh, they even, but they even have a production, uh, um, they have a DOA and a POA, so production, uh, production right and design right of the authorities. Um, there are now at this time several eVTOLs flying with permit to fly as experimental. Um, there is not any certified aircraft worldwide yet. There are two options at the moment if you want to fly, if it's not experimental, uh, eVTOL, one is you can fly as a um, single seater when it's low, less than, uh, excuse me, using the European, it's, two, or two, uh, it's 115 kilograms, 259 pounds, uh, part 103 legal ultralight, and then you don't need a license. And the second is uh, in the German or uh, in the European ultralight class, which is uh, up to now going up to 472.5 kilograms. Um, the first one, which is flying there, is in the German uh, category, the Volocopter. And this is a very big change, which happened. Actually, the decision by the Parliament, European Parliament, and by the European Council are going to be made. Uh, the Parliament has decided, the Council, they have found an agreement, so it's expected that the Council will also agree. So there will be six, uh, the possibility in Euro European countries that the countries go up to 600 kilogram maximum takeoff weight for ultralight, and this makes it possible that, for example, also the Volocopter can fly two-seated because up to now, with the weight limits, it was out of the category, but it was just barely could fit in. But now, with 600 kilograms, there will be several aircraft coming. And I will tell you later why, uh, first, uh, um, why this is so important, the ultralight category or the European microlight category for the development of uh, eVTOLs. Um, this is a situation I just roughly mentioned. It is, it says that basically the rule stays, it's a typical European compromise. Basically the rule stays with 472, but there is a possibility of the countries to make an exemption. Because the reason was some countries wanted to go to 600 kilograms, like Germany, Czech Republic, some other countries like France didn't want to go. So uh, they didn't find a common solution. They gave this out up. Uh, and here you see United Europe. So the green countries are those where you will build fly with 600 kilograms. The red countries are those who say, no, we don't. There are still some white countries, which are countries which haven't decided yet if they go for one or the other solution. But the good thing is, for example, Germany, Czech Republic, and Italy are those countries where most of the ultralights are developed, and those countries all went to 600 kilograms. And this will be starting the new rules approximately beginning of next year, perhaps a little bit earlier, because sure, the, the parliament has decided, but now the countries has to implement it in their rules, and then when the rules become effective, uh, it can be used, but the associations, especially there are the German and the Czech associations, they are already working on the rules. The rules has been 
agreed. And so the first aircraft will be flying very soon after the rule comes through, I think. Why is ultralight so important? Training in, uh, can be done in ultralight aircraft because it, uh, other than experimental aircraft. So you can much faster realize eVTOL concept because uh, for prototypes and also for a kind of pre-serial production because the rules are much easier. Like you could see, the Germans developed a rule for the uh, volocopter and got it into the air while EASA and FAA are still discussing on the basic rules on electric aircraft, they are, uh, on general electric aircraft. So it will definitely take longer. But it is very clear that when we talk about electric transportation, about air taxis, this air taxis will not be ultralight. This will be certified aircraft. But by the time where the, you develop the rules for the certification of this aircraft, the manufacturers can get vehicles into the air and can get experience, which is very important. So in United States, you don't have this category where you could fly EV tolls because like now in LSA, uh, there is no electric propulsion system allowed. And in certified aircraft, part uh, 23 has to be developed. So there is a part 103, but this remains to be just single-seated and uh, non-commercial. So it is, again, just good for trying out. So I sum up a little bit. So what are the key questions now? If Evito will be successful, are it electric or hybrid? Is it propeller or wing-generated lift? Autonomous or piloted? Central controlled? And it, or intelligent autonomous vehicles, and the certification of all of this. You may decide, we have had, actually I've been at several events this year and there have been some votes where a lot, very often the uh, certification came as one of the highest points even before a lot of the technical points because nearly everybody believes this so much investment in engineering development right now that the technical problems will be solved. But these are the key, some of the key questions, yes. But the real key question on the success of eVTOL will be social acceptance. Because if there, will be nobody, if there will be nobody who wants to fly or who wants to have them fly over your head because they don't believe they are safe, there will be no eVTOLs. With all the monies coming in, there will be no success. So social acceptance is a real big key factor for, not for having single eVTOLs taking off somewhere, but for having eVTOLs as perhaps autonomous air taxis flying inside cities, definitely social acceptance is a key factor. So working on the key factor, I think one of the things which really brought the air taxi inside the view of a large group of people, of all the media, was the first Uber event. Because Uber, a very successful uh, taxi service around the world, which, when I'm right, still doesn't make money, but building up a huge organization and having a huge value at the stock exchange. So everybody's looking, they must do something right. So when they were turned their head and said, oh no, we think we're gonna do air taxis, suddenly a lot of other people looked at it as well. So uh, they gui are guiding the way. I have been at both of the Uber events and even if you just see from last year to this year, how the development from 500 people up to more than 1,000 people and having now huge architect groups, uh, cities, now from Texas, uh, from Dallas, you have now the second US city with the joining. There are several cities around the world which want to join as early adopter as well. So they're really moving something in there. Some people, and also me, I don't think the vision will be 100% like it's there, but it is a vision where people can believe in, and it even gives a, gives a business plan to people how it could work. 
Speaking about social acceptance, social acceptance means that you develop the technology right, then you prove that it's flying, and then you get as fast as possible, as many people as possible, getting a hands-on first view experience, that they can talk about people, that this is happening now, and not a, is a computer drawing, because uh, I think I just read on the website of the Vertical Society uh, uh, that now the, they have 100 designs. And I even know some designs which they don't have in there. So there will be even more designs around the world. So most of these designs are very nice computer drawings. Some of them already have some hardware which is working, but most of them are quite far from getting in the air. And I remember when the first uh, Uber event, two days before the Uber, first Uber event, the first Kitty Hawk um, flyer was shown. I had a lot of people there at the Uber event I started laughing, making jokes about it, and said, ah, what's this, you know, it's like a toy or something. But I think now seeing the second one, and I have been at the facilities uh, in Las Vegas, Lake Las Vegas, two days ago, no, three days ago, and, uh, no, on Wednesday. Uh, it's very impressive what they do there. And it's not a normal ultralight, because I do ultralight since 1980. It's not a normal ultralight operation. It's something which is very, very focused on safety, very much focused on how it could happen. But it is, I think, the right approach, or one of the right approaches, if you want to get aircraft in the air without having to wait until the certification rules are there, if you want having people having the experience with this flying, Part 103 ultralight is one way. And then, but if you have the idea and say, okay, but we do eVTOL, so what can go wrong? So their approach saying, okay, we only, for the beginning, we only do it over the water, and we only do it with a height limit. Up to now, if you're a new pilot there, it's just 10 feet. And it's just the maximum speed of, I think, six miles per hour, you fly forward, backward. It's just for avoiding any accident, especially any fatal accident. And I think this is the way how it can go. Later there will come geofencing, you will have the aircraft stabilized, that it can, uh, can fly basically automatically. And like this, you can have more, or you can have people getting a first-hand experience, talking about it. And you will have, like the next step they're talking is when then they have, because you cannot do this with the part 103 ultralight, because part 103 ultralight means that you cannot have uh, commercial operations. But a next step could be such kind of vehicle operating in theme parks, where you have millions of people passing through, though they either see it with their own eyes, or they can even have a ride on there. And this will definitely make uh, a difference of the people that they think they see it's not something which I only see somewhere in the news. It's see something which is there and where you get experience in operating it. And so I think the Part 103 ultralight approach for eVTOL is something which is valid to getting people in the air to get experience and then combined with other approaches, then I think it gets us closer to having uh, vertical air taxis developed. Another opportunity uh, was this autonomous flight of the Volocopter last autumn at uh, Dubai. Um, and they are also getting pretty forward. Uh, they are having now uh, uh, first pre-series designed. And then I have another thing which is just happened this Tuesday. The Bavarian government decided that they will start a test area for autonomous beyond line of sight, flying of EV tolls southwest of Munich. And uh, I think this is a big step forward, and several manufacturers joined. This is, by chance, there are several manufacturers located at this uh, airfield Oberpfaffenhofen. And if you look in the magazine, uh, you also see one image, because why Oberpfaffenhofen is a very nice place, because there was a, the old home airport of Dornier, and the first flight 
50 years ago, the first flight of the Dode 31 uh, vertical takeoff airplane happened exactly at this area. So it's a nice historical site, and they're going to start there. They have a simulator. There will be Volocopter, Lilium. Then there is another uh, Quantum, which is a large drone manufacturer, and Autoflight X. They don't show anything at the moment, but they are heavily working together with the Munich University. And it's a company of Chen Yu. Perhaps some of you will know the name. It's, he founded the company Unique, where he had one of the very first electric aircraft. And he also had, uh, was a very successful drone manufacturer. He left the company. Now he's working with his new company on manned eVTOL. And I'm curious to see what's coming out there. They say they want to fly before the end of the year. So it's quite challenging. Um, now I see my approach, why I'm here and what I'm doing to support this. So we have this magazine we do now for 17 years, the World Directory of Leisure Aviation, for the languages and everything which is flying up to small business jets, helicopters, everything. And since last year, we added the category eVTOL. Before, we had the Volocopter and the 2-3, which were existing, integrated in the uh, helicopter category. Now, the eVTOL category is already exceeding the helicopter category. It's larger. And we even had to cut some out where we think, OK, there, we have time. We can put them in next year, because we don't know if they survive the just concept status. Um, and again, I, I uh, explained, I talked about the eFly journal already before. This is our approach, which we will uh, do there. I'm, I'm already over my 30 minutes time. Um, these are two events which I can recommend you. One is the eFly forum in China, which probably will happen in Shanghai. You have the dates, second to fourth. We still talking with two locations, because that's also an interesting thing. Because if you have done something with aviation over the last years, and you wanted to do a convention somewhere, it really was hard to look to find somebody who supports you. If you do eVTOL, the people looking for you and are competing. So if you, have the, if you do eVTOL events, um, you can do, the, if you do them right, you find a lot of support. And then the next, last one is the eFlight Expo with the eFlight Show, where we will have, or I hope weather permits, everything runs fine, we will have electrical VTOL flying at the show. This uh, is a development in China, like um, Yulanka mentioned. I do uh, have a publication in China, and there also the request for electric is getting higher and higher. These are now is a situation. We talked about Ehang before, which is the only known operator of, a, a, let's say, manned drone. It's a drone manufacturer which just made a very big drone, but now they got some progress in there. Um, but there are several more which are working, especially on the field of um, unmanned transport of goods. And there are the two largest companies uh, which uh, this is the electric, these are the manned electric aircraft I mentioned before. Um, this is the EHA. Uh, we, I mentioned before that TerraFugia, US company, is now owned by the Chinese company Geely, and they are really pushing forward also developing something and the operations in, in China, but we will hear more from Carl about this. But there are two large companies, which like FedEx are logistic companies. One is GD, and they have several drones running, up to uh, even uh, winged drones up to several tons, which are flying already autonomously. And they have special permission from the government to fly on special routes. And they are want in, in less than one year time want to have vertical takeoff drones with 400 kilograms load, which are operated on some routes. They have a lot of government support, which is GD um, and SF. It's their largest competitors, and both are working on drones. This one on the top you see it's an ultralight, which they bought modified to an unmanned operating transport vehicle. Um, but there are more. But there is more happening because it's not, it's like here that also the tech companies like Alibaba, Tencent, Huawei, they're all either looking 
or investing or direct already working. Like Huawei, for example, they are doing the operational center for the EHANG operations when they fly with their drone because their drone is not piloted. It is remote piloted or automated flying. And Huawei is doing this over the G5 network because they realize that when setting up the G5 network, they have one problem. Now they have such a high data speed in some cities, but nobody is using it because who wants to download a whole uh, cinema movie in one minute time on a cell phone? Who needs this? Because you look it in a longer time. So they are looking very urgently of ways how to use this high data volume which they have, and they are already operating in changing the, the antennas in a certain angle for reaching a higher altitude uh, so that you can also control the VTOLs over the system. Um, then I mentioned we have the, had the eFlight uh, forum last year, which was quite a success. We have the next one this year, and now we're at the questions slide again. So. Any questions? Uh, Josh Prolock from Electro Aero. Thanks. Great talk. Good to see you. Got your finger on the pulse of everything. Um, what's your thoughts on Europe versus FAA versus CASA, where we deal with um, getting GA certification for electric first? Uh, I think, um, li like a general aviation aircraft, um, you already have, like in a light sport category in Australia, uh, Australia you have the uh, Pipistrel uh, Alpha Electro already uh, flying. And EASA, the responsible person in EASA, told us that they have a version of this. Uh, it's not the Electro Alpha, it will be the Virus Electro based because they have the certified virus, um, CSLSA, and this will be in an electric version by the end of this year. Okay. FAA. It must be in part 23, which is getting a bit more complicated because there are more rules to applicate. There is this new part 23 rule, which is more open. Perhaps we will hear more from Greg about this. He will talk, I think, either today, later or tomorrow morning from Gamma. And what weight category would the virus be? Electric virus? Pardon? Would that be a weight limited virus or would it be a, a not restricted weight? No, the, 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 the virus will be still in the 600, uh, 600 kilogram as a CSLSA where you have a maximum takeoff weight of uh, 600 kilograms. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? No questions? Good. Then either I bored you or I finished everything up, which is also good. Okay, thank you.